Well, this is one of two supplemental discussions on lab UVIs that you can use for the force and displacement laboratory. Um, and the, the, the main point of this first one is really to model the output of the strain gauge sensor. And uh, so I'm showing the laboratory configuration you're going to have. We have cantilevered beam, tipped force, and we're going to be measuring the deflection. Usually this, the, we do measure the deflection at the tip, uh, at the point of, of force application. There's a strain gauge instrumentation amplifier where we measure the output voltage. And the point of really these two VIs is to help you get to a point where one, you're better understand the relationships and use it to make some calculations, but also maybe to build a uh, lab UVI that can automate the calibration process. Uh, you can do everything by hand manually, and we've done that in the past, but uh, I also want to show you that LabVIEW enables you to build some very um, helpful um, programs that will automate the uh, collection and analysis and uh, processing of, of data and also the uh, documentation and so on. So, so let's, let's look at the first case is the modeling and we discussed quite a bit how the you can estimate the output voltage from the from the beam uh, sensor from the uh, from the bridge uh, a circuit. So I, I want to show you a VI for doing that. So this this VI, as you can see, has I pasted a picture of the of the um, schematic of the of, of the of the relevant configuration. We've got a tip force for gauges that are presumed wired in a full bridge, right? There's two on top, two in the bottom face. Relevant equations here, and all the parameters and SI units are uh, can be put on the front panel. On here are the beam parameters. LB is actually the total length of the beam to the point of application, not the actual length of the beam. Um, and the, um, to the beam tip. And, and LS is the distance from the beam uh, for, sorry, from the force application to the, um, call it the cross axis of the strain gauges. Remember there's a sensitive axis of the strain gauges that's along the strain um, direction and then there's a cross axis. So when we talk about the distance to the strain gauges, we usually take that center line uh, from say the point of ap force application. Alright, so we've got beam parameters and then we've also got in sense instrumentation parameters here, the gauge factor of each gauge, the Amplifier that's implied at the output of the of the bridge, voltage input into the bridge itself, and then the location to the strain gauge. All these uh, can affect uh, what the output is. And here is where you enter an applied force. Now, underneath here, I'll show you is a mass grip node. Pay attention just to this part because this has all the equations. You can use a mass grip node or a formula node. Uh, mass grip node is not really needed here. We're not taking advantage of any of the functions that are built into mass grip. So if you want to use a formula node and uh, just do these basic calculations that way, that's fine. You can also build a full block diagram just, um, of the calculations, but I think it's a lot easier to use the text-based uh, relations here for these simple little equations. So all the parameters on the left side applied for, so you can calculate the output of the of the bridge here. Note that the key thing here, on the, I assume a full bridge, here's the output, right? That's That comes straight from the lecture discussion. Input voltage times the uh, gauge factor times the strain. Where do you get the strain? Well, you calculate that from the stress divided by the Young's modulus. The stress comes from, again, the pending moment. And so all these equations are all giving you the strain, so you calculate that output voltage. So something that you can use to, one is to just help you understand those equations better, but also to make your calculations if you like. You can adopt this. So note that this is running in a while loop, right? And it's in, it's constantly taking data. That's why I'm trying to use it to simulate sort of the real sensor. It's going to take data with a certain applied force until you tell it to record. At that point, it it completes one of the steps in this for loop. Don't have to use a for loop, I just did it this way to have a fixed number of steps. You can give it the number of steps you want to take, it'll run it, and then it'll output the data. Again, you could put the outputting of the data inside and update your display of data more um, 
uh, regularly. I'm doing it at the end when the program's done. Again, you can improve on this uh, very easily. So hitting run, you have input the number of points you want to collect or display, and you change your applied force here. You can, you know, uh, change it from 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, set it to 0. It's going to display the step you're on here, and that's just an output from the indicator on the for loop. And as it, at each step, uh, as, as it's running, the for, the sorry, the while loop is constantly calculating the deflection, the tip deflection using the implied stiffness of the beam, the output voltage, the amplified output. Once you see what you like, it, this is a little model meant to simulate a typical calibration step. You apply a force, you, you're looking at the output voltages, the deflections, and you say, okay, record that, write it down, or put it into a table, put it into Excel, whatever it is. Here, lab is looking at that data, you're collecting it all, you input whatever you want, and you say record it. And then you could record that into arrays, and you could put that onto a file automatically, uh, or you could write it down. Okay, so let me show, show you how this runs. When you hit run, starts running, um, you know, step one, deflections are zero. I'm going to put in a one newton load, so I'm loading the beam. Oh, and it calculates deflection, bridge output, amplified output. I like that, record. Next step, step two, apply two newtons. You see that all the figures change, record. Step three, I take, put three newtons in there, record. Program stops, plots the data puts it into these tables, and there you have your very simple calibration, okay? So again, you the, the whole point of this was to build this simple little model, all right, that simulates what a strain gauge output will give you, a full bridge. I wanted to use that as a model in another VI that I'm going to show you shortly that you can use to actually automate the uh, calibration process when you go to lab. So I'll end this discussion with that.